And with that, boys, let's hit it. Receive all. Okay. Wow. That feels good. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace, and today I wanted to talk about hitting first in the June clan battle, aka CB5. To be honest, this is quite hype, and I think it might be the first time that Scarlet has been dethroned. However, Scarlet only lost very, very marginally, but let's talk about that a little bit later. I guess in this video, I wanted to talk about like what really does it take to be a top 10 or even like a top, uh, I don't want to say top one, but rather like a candidate or a contender to be like first in clan battle. And so without further ado, let's jump right into the video and let's start by looking at the rankings okay guys so my game crashed so i just switched over to my pvp alt since it was running as well and so as you can see here sky we are first and this is actually really nice because what you can see is that the competition is so incredibly close right between sky and scarlet there is only 3 mil in score that is potentially like 1.5 to about 2 million in damage for a lot of clans that's only one or two attacks otherwise if i scroll down a little bit you'll see over here look weepo and ethereal like gosh that is so freaking close man if i was ethereal i'd kind of be like kicking myself because that is like wow that's like less than an attack and then we come down here and look at sweatshop and sarin cult what what the heck 900k apart and then you got vac down here which is like i think another 400k apart like oh my god it's so freaking close but yeah honestly scrolling through all of this like oh wow like it all is really really close honestly speaking it's anyone's game like it could be a single attack that gets you across the line right but in this video i do want to kind of describe like the work ethic and kind of the culture that goes on in those what the heck they freaking got 24th imagine autoing to top 25 man i freaking won in on that to be honest but yeah all right that's enough looking at these clans but essentially like i think well played everywhere because this was a really really interesting cb and the reason it was so interesting is because like there was just so much creativity in all of these bosses typically in the other cbs i think oh i can't even click into it that's so sad but back to what i was trying to say typically for these bosses like everyone in the top 10 probably up to top 25 is using the same timelines remember this guy right here and if you've got all the timelines like written out for you obviously the top one or top three clans or whatever they're gonna all be using the same timelines however what was interesting about this one i think was like that the b5 timelines they kind of were a little bit screwy and so every guild might have been using like different timelines and so that's really exciting to be honest also on top of that let me find the freaking oleon where are you bro so yeah here over here and on top of that like there's i guess always those tiny little bits of discrepancy for example over here we're saying that this comp is doing 950k and this one is doing 1.05 mil and i guess like a lot of it comes down to those like factors as well right like the crits the rng the misses and really it's something like that that could like change between first and second place i'm not 100 percent sure on what scarlet did like i don't really have any insight into what they do but what i think happened was that one of our timelines might have been more superior in like the b5 i can't remember if it was b5 enrage or b5 normal but i think we were hitting more on one of them and so let's kind of take a step back and talk about like what exactly it takes to be top 10 or even top 25 top 50 top 100 i'd say and so what i want to show you guys here is kind of like the character list what is like the minimal amount of stars and units and equipment and stuff like that before you can even think about going for top 10 because i guess i have like a pretty good experience since i've been like in the bottom end of top 10 and then the top end of top 10 for a very long time i was in valk and we achieved like 12 10 8 9 7 something like that right and then i came over to sky for these last two cbs and then we've gotten like third and first there are definitely differences between like first and like 10th and then there are definitely differences from like 10 to like 25 and below but what is consistent is that everyone just has to have the units and so that being said let's go through this and i kind of want to talk about the units that we use the most and just for context my situation is that i am a monthly player i only pick up like the two times dungeon drop pass thing that also gives you like 10 rolls over a month and so this is my progress from like a soft launch player who has played since day one okay so where we're at is that we are starting with all of these five stars we've got erica who's not not very necessary but definitely a good backup i don't think i've actually used her since like cb1 and then next i see kari hiori and mitsuki who all three have been used so extensively in all of the cbs maybe not hiori because i think hiori only really rose to prominence in like the last two or three cbs and then after that we've got miyako ninon lima pekarin mimi all of them not really used akari who is used in every single mage team so far kuka nozomi not really used at all and then we've got tamaki tamaki is like some really extreme edge cases now for me personally in cb1 
BB4 when we had to fight the crab, she was my tank. And then we've got a whole bunch of core units. So we've got Kokoro, Saren, Susana, and Shiori. All of them have been used so much in every single CB. After that, we've got a whole bunch of units that we don't really use. I'm talking about Hatsune, Samapeko, Monica, Rei. Ever since CB1, I have not used Monica nor Rei, and I don't think I've ever used like Samapeko and Hatsune. Then we've got Makoto, the fat juicy. You guys already know who she is. She is the MVP of CB. All right, after that, we have Yukari, who also has been an MVP, but only quite recently. She is used quite frequently, but she's not like a must-have like Suzuna or Shiori or Kokoro or Saren. However, there are going to be a lot of scenarios where like you do need her, and so it is expected to have her at five stars. Then we've got Kiara, who is going to be replaced by Summer Kiara, which is really sad, but she has served her purpose, and she will be back when we get her like six star or her UE. So I talked about Rei. Next, we've got Maho, who is not used at all. And then Jun, Arisa, Kyoko. Oh, wow. Okay. Jun, up until now, has served us like so hard. You guys already know the famous comp. Jun, Kari, Makoto, Shiori, Saren. Moving forward, we might see that a little bit less, but like that's that. And then aside from that, I think the last remaining cores would be like Arisa, Kyoka, and potentially Samakiaru. And then Ayana, and then finally enough, Misato. Misato, Ayana, definitely like very, very specialized use as well as Shinobu actually. But yeah, this is kind of what my units look like. And this is, <laughs> I guess, what some people refer to as the top 10 box. Essentially, most of your cores are actually maxed out at five stars. And then you got a whole bunch of like, sometimes some people can get away with a little bit less. My Makoto, my Jun, my Arisa, my Kyoka are still three stars. There are a lot of people that want to like, you know, hang me for it, but you know, I'll get hanged. Screw it. But yeah, so like going through all of that, that exercise is actually really important because it's actually useful for a lot of people, not just top 10. If you guys are looking for top 25, top 50, top 100, stuff like that, you guys should be looking at the exact same units, just like probably lower power levels or star levels. And guys, we haven't even talked about like hit allocations or anything. Like this is just the bare minimum just to get into any of those clans. However, moving forward, I think it's going to be a lot easier now, especially because we have that CN like sheet. And so hopefully that sheet is actually just going to foster a lot more competition because now everyone has access to potentially all of the best comps and all the units that they should be building. All right, and so with that being said, I kind of want to talk about like the next part, which is probably the most important part, hit allocations. So what exactly are hit allocations and why is it so important? So my next video is probably going to be more about hit allocations and more in depth, but I wanted to give like a quick summary here. And so what I have here is a whole bunch of these bosses and what's most important is actually this one over here, which is the HP. Actually, you know what? Let's use an English one. Maybe it'll be a bit easier on the eyes for you guys. So as you can see here, you have bosses 1 through to 5, and you've got like 6 mil HP, 8 mil, 10 mil, 12 mil, and 20 mil. And then if you go back to Clan Battle 4, you'll see that it's actually identical. And if I go back to Clan Battle 3, it's also identical. What does change is the amount of damage you do because there is changing like defenses and M defenses, especially with each different boss. However, what hit allocations are really, in a nutshell, you want to like be able to allocate all of your hits of every single member into all of these HPs. And what I mean by that is that, for example, if this is Oleon, and if I go back to this sheet and we have a look at Oleon's damage. We've got Oleon over here and we're expecting to hit about 1 mil with this comp and so therefore it's going to take 20 of these comps approximately or like you know 10 of these and then like another 10 of these ones down here. From 90 attacks it's going to take us 20 attacks to actually take down Oleon and so what that means is that you've actually expended those 20 attacks with those specific units and so those units cannot be used anymore and I actually picked a really bad one because this is using like Mitski twice. So if I was to pick like another better example it'd be like let's say this this one over here and then this one over here. This one is your boy, you already know it. It's the Jun Saren battery comp, the best auto comp in the game. And then so we're not gonna be using any of those characters in like this one over here, for example. Obviously, if you have like all 30 different people, like you can do a whole bunch of different hit allocations. But essentially what I'm really trying to say is that you need 30 dedicated people who are willing to like have a schedule, I guess. You're gonna be going from B1 through to B5 and there's just not gonna be like any creativity at all. As you can see, B1 is dominated like overwhelmingly by these two comps and so therefore like you're going to be expecting I think this was like 1.4 mil or something and so I think like four or five attacks goes into the six mil HP of women and so how you really do it is you kind of have like a checklist of 90 attacks and then for each attack you have like a specific team comp and then you allocate each of them to each of these bosses and so what that means is that you kind of have a plan on how you take down every single boss and so you can have like a projection of where you'll end up however again this is going to take insane coordination and like most people are not going to be willing to do this but if you guys are willing willing to do it and you guys have a box that's similar to mine, I reckon you guys can make it the top 10 easy. Really at this point in the game, I think top 10 is a matter of dedication. Like you guys already saw my units. My units because of time are as best as they can be. And so therefore given enough time, I think that most people should be able to hit top 10 if you really want to. With that being said though, this is a freaking princess game. And you know, every time I go into clan battle with the top 10 clan, I always think
think like maybe I should not be doing this. This game was just built like to be a really casual game and somehow we've gone like full hardcore on it. To be honest, it's actually really, really fun, but it is extremely time consuming. And so just back onto the topic of hit allocations, I kind of want to say like the most important people are like your coordinators. There are going to be people who are doing like 16 hour days, like making sure that everyone's like attacks are going in the right order. We're going to make sure we're going to get a bunch of these team ones into the Wyvern and then we're going to make sure we're going to get a bunch of these teams into the Wyvern and then all the way through up to B5 and then you're going to do it all again until all 90 attacks are exhausted. I think what separates like T10 from T25s and T50s or whatever is hit allocations. It's that level of dedication where like, you know, oh, I am going to hit this boss. I am going to wait like three hours later and hit this boss and then another three hours later, I'm going to hit this boss over here. What separates T1 from T10, I would say, is like a lot of optimal hit allocations, right? In the past, typically this means research. For example, if I was able to find this comp, but I wasn't able to find this comp, then obviously for like every single attack, I'm losing 100k. And so whilst I might have like really good hit allocations, they might not be optimal. I think when it comes down to it, aside from like crits and like missed attacks and stuff like that, that's what really separates the top of T10 and the bottom of T10. T25, I already showed you guys like Tim with his Wii Auto CB, like they've already shown that you can auto all the way to top 25. And to be able to achieve that kind of feat, I really think that you need a box like this. And just to reiterate it, I don't think this box is impossible. The majority of these are actually like your standard units, which are not from the gacha. The only ones that you can't farm up are probably like your Makoto, Arisa, Jun, and Kyoka. But honestly, Makoto, Jun, and Arisa are really freaking important. And so let's start going down from there. So then what separates like a T25 from the T50s? I think it's at this point where you start like not having like the right stars or the equipment or the levels. I know it's at about like T25 to T50 where people start being really lax about levels. So for example, our last CB, we did it at level 102. And I think I saw, oh, what's that? And I think I saw a lot of different clans like attempting it at like, oh, you got to be level 100 plus. And I'm like, bro, what? And so what that means is that there is like a Jemmy investment, right? To actually refresh and make sure that you are at the top of the level. You have all of the right equipments by then. However, like if you are lagging behind, no refreshes and stuff like T25, T50, I think is fine. As long as you're able to also keep your equipment up. And so that being said, I want to make a recommendation. And that recommendation is that if you guys do have a box like this, but you guys don't want to go like full try hard, I would say try to aim for at least top 25 or top 50. There is just so much less pressure on like refreshing, making sure all of your equipment is up to date and all of that, having all of the right star levels, but most importantly, having a lot of the right units. I was once told that Arisa was optional. Turns out she was not optional and I was just lucky that I luck sacked her. I was also told that Ilya was optional and I still don't have Ilya. Spoiler alert, it turns out that Ilya was not optional after all. And so yeah, guys, I just want to reiterate, if you do want to go kind of competitive, I think like for the rewards versus the, like the hard work or effort that you need to put in, I would say top 25 to top 50 is kind of the place to be, especially because you don't have to do an obnoxious amount of refreshing. All right, but I guess to end it there, this is actually really exciting to actually hit like top one rank. I personally, honestly didn't want to really go for it. I just told my clan leader, I was like, I just wanted to be like the best clan mate I can be, do like the best attacks that I could. However, I was just too burnt out and I didn't have any capacity to do any coordinations. And so if you guys for any reason think like I carried my clan, absolutely not. The people who carry your clans are the coordinators and the leaders. And so hopefully my next video, especially on hit allocations, hopefully will help you guys out a bit. All of you coordinators, all of you leads, like hopefully I will impart like some knowledge and some level of logic and you guys can have a better time. But yeah, I just want to say like, I am really proud of my clan. There were so many people that just did not get any sleep and it was really freaking crazy. But after seeing like every single thing that happened, I would say Sky definitely deserved first. So much timeline refinement, so much crit fishing, especially on the Wyvern. It's just so much effort everywhere. And I'm sure like every single other clan, like probably up to like top 100, top 500, be like you guys put so much effort in. But like this time it was just like incredibly insane. And just to wrap it up, I don't think we are going to be going for top one ever again. I think a lot of people are kind of done. It's like, oh yeah, you know, we proved to ourselves that we could actually go for rank one if we wanted to. And so yeah, I thought that was like quite a nice story. I know that this video was littered with like a lot of opinions, but this was just something that was a little bit more close to me than usual. And hopefully I gave a little bit of perspective as to like what really goes on in these top clans. No, it really isn't a whole bunch of cheaters that are like, oh man, let's turn on our crit hacks. To sum it up, it's just a lot of hard work in a princess game. All right, guys, let's wrap up this video. I don't think there's too much left to say except Sky. Well done, my boys. Well done. All right, secret message, guys, and that is rank one. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. Let's me know that you've actually made it to the end of the video, and I know it was really different from usual, but like, 
I'm really proud. I really wanted to talk about this and hopefully you guys found it kind of entertaining. And speaking of entertaining, if you guys did find it kind of entertaining or like somewhat helpful, I know I did go through a little bit of knowledge here, then please consider a sub, a comment, a follow. You guys already know what it is. But as always, as my cat once told me, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.